Hi everybody, how are you? For those of you that are new, <clears throat> my name is Noelle, welcome in. And for the rest of you that know me, thanks for coming back. I appreciate you guys all so much and gals and peoples and your little dogs too. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Hi Rhonda and Doug and Michelle and Sue and Doug Doug again. How are you guys all doing? I got all my little post-it notes hanging up here. I'm trying not to forget anything, and I have a lot to talk about today. Um, I think I could probably do part three, part four, part part five on, on this topic. Oh, my. And the sticky's wearing out. <laughs> Hi, Jose. 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 Wow. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Lucy and Ethel are here together. Brett is here. Brett is is my Ethel. How are you? How are you? And Mia, how are you? Lots and lots and lots. Oh, and Amy is here too, Miss Evan Owens. I gotta get my uh I gotta get my um act together. It's been a busy day. Um so, something that I want to bring up again um, that we talked about last week, it wasn't so much so that it was a heated topic, but I have no, it, but it was a topic that I hope I have this, oops, turn my volume down because I was listening to somebody last night while I was listening. Do, 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 do. Um, this way I can watch the chat. Or, or attempt to. Um, one thing I will tell you guys is there's going to be a lot of me not responding to a lot of stuff going on. Hi, Marcy. How are you? Danielle. Woo -woo. Ty, how are you? Renee, hello. Um, because I do have a lot to get through. And um, I want to I want to give you guys as much information as I can, but I also want to plant the seed of doing some research on your own because what I see in my area and what you see in your areas are going to be somewhat similar but vastly different. What people are going to find for lighting fixtures on the East Coast <laughs> compared to what you are going to find, and I'm talking about estate sales and stuff like that, compared to what you're going to find on the West Coast or or the Deep South are going to be very different. So I, I'm going to try to touch on a little bit of everything, and then that will give you the opportunity to say, oh, I, 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 see, I see that in my area. You bought a lamp yesterday, so you've got research to do. Amazing. Um, somebody already bought one last week and found one in a, I think she said it was a shed. Found it in a shed. Who was it? Wasn't her. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to remember because that would that would take brain space. Um, oh. I know who it was. My vintage rescue is exactly who it was. She found this shade and she could not find any information on it at all. Well, you see those little hooks there? There's actually three of them. You can see one way back here underneath the ruler. That's actually a shade. And it's called a fly catcher shade. Um, fly catcher. Well, how do they describe that? Fly catcher pendant lights. And I'm sure you can as, uh, assume as to why they're called fly catcher pendant lights because the flies get caught in them, right? But here's, here's an idea of what I'm just going to show you here because I don't want to pull up another tab of what kind of ideas you're going to see. And it will have that light. Let's see if I can pull up a bigger picture. So you see the, the, the three chains, and then you see the pendant light coming down inside it. And so, hi, Glenn, how are you? 
Jeremy, I miss Michelle. I, I think I caught you on the on the on the intro. So, um, very interesting. And you may see, I didn't show. I don't think I showed these last last time. They've been sitting here waiting for you guys. Would you think that this? I paid ten dollars for this happily. Would you think that this light fixture? It's like a rice paddy hat. <laughs> Would you think that this light fixture shade globe, whatever you want to call it, goes like this? Or does it go like this? Up or down? This is how it goes. These are actually pulls. So it will hook into, into another chain inside and it would go up above and up. Yep. This is how it goes. So if you see this, if you see these lights and they don't have the chains, but they have the holes and you, you know, you're going to, you're going to start wondering what the heck, what the heck. It's the same as fly catcher and basic construction. Exactly. So this is this is the correct way, and it would have a light that, that came down in it. Sometimes they may have a, a wire where they sit, and it would be a table lamp. It's all in how, how you want to use it, right? But this is one style, and these are both. This one is missing the little, I'm going to be real technical this Duma Hickey right here <laughs> on one of the chains, but this is the same thing, same basic. And, and you have your light poles. Look at the, look at the, um, the design on these. And when they light up, when the light is lit up, can you see the, it's really hard to see. It's probably might be easier to see the pattern on the inside. It's almost a scallop in that clear, when these are lit up, it is so beautiful, and the the um, the different beams. I don't even know rays, whatever of light that that um, that the that the light inside it puts out on the ceiling and out onto the walls is so cool. If you've ever been in an old house that has period uh, lighting fixtures on it and you turn the lights on oh my goodness illumination that's a good word you were hoping i was going to say that i don't like being wrong but we had a couple ceiling lights like that in my childhood kit house yeah who else did i miss anybody else anyway so it's it's amazing what these what these can go for and i i kind of went over we're gonna go over some shades and stuff again today um right with boob lights for sure prism that works too um so i didn't really talk about about those last week they were sitting there i think i've got most everything that i showed you that i have bought at that sale listed except for one the big the tall sh the long chandelier i have to have my son hold it up so that i can take the pictures of it <laughs> Um, anyway, so I wanted to touch on the keyword spamming, um, for, for listing your using an, a title, using a word in a title to bring somebody to your listing. That is not what that word is. Keyword spamming which is against eBay's policy. Do it on the other platforms you list on if you want. But, you know, um, you bought two, what'd you buy? Two milk glass hobnail hurricane style lamps, but still need to research and figure out how to pack and ship them. They're easy to pack and ship. I just say that and I don't mean to make, I don't mean to make anybody feel stupid. Most people are scared to 
are scared, anxious, whatever, to pack um, glass and that kind of stuff. But the best thing you can do is the the two um, luster, the two tall ones with all the prisms hanging down. I took every prism off. I, I photoed them. There was eight tri-tip uh, prisms on them and they I put I took each one of them off and put them in a little baggie and then when I actually ship it they will be wrapped each one will be wrapped in um, uh, oh, I'll spit it out here in tissue paper they will be put back in that baggie and then each one will be wrapped in bubble wrap and then they will all go in a small box and that box will go with on the bottom of whatever box I'm putting in, they'll all go in. So I'm more, I more worry about those than I do the lamps themselves. That's because those, those, um, prisms are very, um, can be very brittle, especially if they're older. Um, anyway, so no, you're not in trouble, Brett, not at all. Um, the main reason that I'm bringing it up, I use hard to find. The problem is, is that if you, let's see, what can I, I have like 25 tabs open here, you guys. What's, what's, what, what's one more, right? Let's just go here. Let's go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Making sure I'm sharing. Cause you know, cause we all know. <laughs> okay. Share and let's go here. Oh, what did I just remove? Hopefully it wasn't a bad, a bad thing. So let's go in here and let's do, um, style lamps and let's go to images. So if you see a lamp for $79.99 that says Tiffany Morris LED, Robert Lewis, hi, Tiffany Morris, style number is the number actual. Here is, um, let's go, style art. These these lamps, Qu Quizal Mission Tiffany style art glass, that's a no-no. You are, you are listing your item using Tiffany, which is a known brand, a very well-known brand. If your lamp isn't got um, four digits after it, it is not a Tiffany. <laughs> and, and it should not have Tiffany anywhere in, near, around the title or the description because it is not Tiffany. Your Adidas shoes are not Nikes. You cannot put Nike style. Your um, what I, I used last last week. I used uh, purses. Um, let's let's go for some clothing. What's some clothing? Somebody tell me some clothing. Oil lamps traveled fine in the back of covered wagons, just wrapped in blankets. Use the same thought. Exactly, Rhonda. Your um, ugly sweaters that may look like another maker, they don't, they, you don't put so-and-so style in there. You don't put, uh, you, I, I know you guys get it. You cannot do that on eBay. The, the, the link Let's see. I'm going to go out of here. I got to go back here. I'm hoping that I'm not. The link to that is in the description along with a bunch of other links. I, I, I Velcro. You cannot say Velcro unless it's Velcro branded. If your item has Velcro brand on it, then you can say Velcro. I would, I would tell you to not just be safe. You would say hook and loop. So you have a lamp that looks like a Tiffany lamp, but it's not a Tiffany lamp. Then it is a stained glass lamp. And then you can put all your keywords in there for, for whatever it is. You have a pair of shoes that look like Louis Vuitton because somebody took um, 
sandpaper and sanded the sole and painted the bottom of it red. You cannot put Louis Vuitton style in your title. And I'm seeing this a lot. And I, it's funny because I noticed, I've noticed it before, but because we talked about it last week, I've really noticed it this week with a lot of people um, that I watch. And I've been look as I've been listing and looking up comps and stuff like that. I would, okay, Michelle, this is, this is great for, I would never, ever, Renee, are you still in here? I would never, ever, ever take any of my items that are breakable and worth a lot of money to anybody to ship, pack and ship them. I about puked one day when I stood and watched a packing shipping gal at, at a professional place pack a antique um, photo for this guy. And I just want, I, I had to get out of there, but I had to stand in line and watch her. And Renee, my friend Renee Duvall, she's in here somewhere. She made a comment here a little bit ago. When we first met, um, what did you sell? What was that? Was it a, a, a milk bottle? It was some, I can't remember what it was. She took it to have it professionally packaged and they charged her so much money. It wasn't even funny. And then just to package it. <clears throat> and then it was so big, it was going to cost, she, she lost money just paying in the packaging. She lost all of her profit just paying in the packaging. And I said, bring it to me. So we went in the garage and I undid all their packaging and I repackaged it. And uh, what was that? What was that that you sold a long time ago when we first, when we first met that I, uh, it wasn't when we first met, but shortly after. What was that, Renee? Um, anyway, um, and anyway, so I repackaged it for her and we sent it down there and she got, the people were really happy with it. It, it arrived as it was. And I told her, I said, don't you ever do that again? She was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> anyway. Milk jug. That's what I thought. It was a vintage. It was a half, it was a half gallon milk jug, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what I thought it was. So, you know, that it, it's where it is. And if you're going to do that, if you're going, if that's what's in your head, that you're going to take it somewhere and have them pack it and ship it for you, make sure that you build that price in, put it, put that in your shipping and handling um, price. Um, because it's going to cost you some money and, and it's, it's, there are, um, Jeremy, would you be so kind as to go to Toledo Antiques? They have, you can either just put their, their YouTube channel in the chat. They have a video that shows you how to pack and ship China and all kinds of breakables. And they are the best of the best in my opinion. They sell huge sets of china. They sell all kinds of antiques. They sell all kinds of breakables. And let me just tell you, if you want to learn how to pack and ship from the best, those two, husband and wife, they th that that's in my opinion, they're the they, they have the best. I've I've talked about them before. Not that there aren't other people out there. Those are just the ones that come to mind. I don't want to discount anybody because um, that's not my that's not my goal. Um, I believe that Cat, the nurse flipper, also has some shipping videos. I have some shipping videos on when on how I ship Rad Christopher Radco ornaments and stuff like this. So, um. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ship breakables. I will say, though, make sure that you add in your time and, and materials if you're buying over the years. Yes, Tim. Tim at over the years also has a very... Thank you, Michelle. Um, Tim. Um, oh, I love him. Tim and his mom, Ma Dukes. So 
Um, Tim has great videos on on uh, how to pack. He that's one of his his big things that he does is a lot of glassware. Um, and and feel free to drop that in there also if you would like to, Michelle. Um, so don't be afraid. Just take your time. Do you need to double box? I've never double boxed. A lot of people feel they need to double box. If you think you're going to double box something, make sure you add that into your weights. Make And, and you don't have to prepackage your items, but you should have an idea what a box weighs. Take a flat box. You know, you can print it all out. I used to have a list. I had a list of all of every box, bubble mailer and everything, the width and the length, <clears throat> how much it weighed. And then... I had a list on my wall when I first when I first was learning how to do all of this so that I knew what I needed it to add in just for the box. And then you need to add in a couple of ounces for tape and you need to add in several ounces. So if I took this is what I'm gonna tell you. Let's see how well can you guys see this? Let me go. If I was going to ship this lamp right here, I would weigh it. There's some broken glass on it. I wonder what from just now I'm seeing it. I don't really think that this, this weighs four pounds, 7.8 ounces. So right there, I'm at five pounds. I'm just going with five pounds alone just for the lamp. Okay. Now. How big is the lamp? And are you going to sell it with the shade or are you going to sell the shade separately? I'm going to sell the shade separately, um, probably. Hopefully that's not, I don't know where the glass came from. Anyway, we'll, we'll pretend that we're selling it with the shade because we, we weighed it with the shade on, okay? So shade. And I'm measuring it with the shade on. There we go. So this is, what did I do with my other ruler? Who knows? You want something flat so you can get an idea just of what it is like this. This is 16 and a half inches tall. So I myself am going to go 23 inches tall because I'm going to take that shade off and I'm going to wrap it separately. And that's going to put me at right at 23 inches. All right. How wide is the base on this lamp? Take your ruler. You can't just go, ooh, it's right there. Take your ruler. Take your lamp. Set your lamp in the center of your ruler and then bring your straight edge. I'm taking this as a straight edge to the edge of the ruler. And that's on one. And now I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. This thing is nine and a half inches wide. So I'm going to need a box that's 12 inches wide. So two 12 by 12 by 12 boxes taped together end to end will ship this lamp at, what did I say, five pounds? I'm going to put 10 pounds on there because it's going to go Federal Express or whatever. It's going to go the cheapest. I'm going to put 10 pounds on that lamp on a 12 by 12 by 24 box. And that is how I do stuff like this. If you overcharge, you can always refund them money. If you don't want to refund them money, then you use that extra money as your shipping and handling to pay for your packaging. Does that make sense to you guys? Thank you, guys. Thank you for dropping that link, Michelle. I hope that I hope that might help just a tad bit, but I I have uh, seen people say I'm not going to list this item until I have a proper box for it. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. All I need to do is break something. I have seen people 
go to the trouble of prepackaging items. Okay, my son did that when he first started. He prepackaged items. Well, guess what? A lot of stuff he prepackaged in flat rate boxes from the post office. I have to go through his whole store and redo everything. I sh should actually end all of his items, to be honest, and go and start and and go back through. Um, so he he packaged a lot of he prepackaged a lot of his items, and a lot of them are packed in priority mail boxes, flat rates, and stuff like that. So, any questions on that? On how I on how I do my so that I can so that I can list it after what do you got here Jeremy after recent experiences a Home Depot Walmart combo of boxes would be perfect absolutely 100% and you can also go to U-Haul U-Haul has specialty boxes I mean man they have an area for their boxes that's as big as my office they have boxes for TVs. They have boxes for um, lamps, picture frames, all that kind of stuff. So don't don't look at something and go, oh, that's so cool, and you comp it, and it's and it's worth a great amount of money, and you're like, I don't want to ship that. Where am I going to get a box? Hi, Kristen. How are you? You're gonna UPS is cheaper now for most areas because they have um, changed their first class to ground. And so does it take longer? Yes, but it's a lot cheaper. I just did a, a bunch of, um, um, I just did a bunch of shipping for a couple of live sales that I did with my friend Janet and I sent almost everything. Uh, oh, you said UPS. UPS is cheaper. Yes. And USPS now has their new first class ground and all and all of that and wow what a difference that that has made through i hate the u-haul boxes I, I i agree with you but you know what is nice about the u-haul boxes they are very thick and they are very sturdy so if you have a piece that's worth a lot of money you may want to you may want to go that route um personally i haven't had to i know that my u-haul uh, the one that I've rented trucks from when I moved and stuff like that, they told, they always ask me if I need boxes and they go, don't worry about buying them. They go, we, we take boxes back from people. They'll put them in the trucks and ask if we want to keep them. He goes, we have a huge pile of used boxes that we just give out to people. So you may, that, that, um, that may be, uh, something to, um, check into also. And you use a large priority mailbox, not flat rate. Yes, but you can't use that if you're shipping UPS or FedEx, Doug. So if you prepackage your stuff and then you sell it later on and it's it's gonna go something that and the buyer chooses FedEx or UPS or you change all of that stuff and you have that box prepackaged. You're screwed. Plus, you wasted a box that we that we all pay for. The cost of the USPS boxes is baked in to what we pay the shipping on them. So they're they're not free. So every one of those boxes, whenever you see somebody has all of their shelves lined with the large USPS boxes, you can tell them thank you. So yeah. Yeah. So that's just that's that's just that. And don't be afraid to package something. And and when you're packaging anything over um yep. Yeah, well, I'm not going to use a USPS box for UPS or when people use them to move. Oh yeah. I usually don't use UPS unless it's a heavy item. USPS is cheaper most of the time for me. I don't, I don't, I don't find that. Um, also, you guys know that a USPS flat rate padded envelope is seven dollars and 
what was it, seven dollars and sixty cents on pirate ship as compared to eight something on um eBay. Just thought I'd pass that along because you guys know how I feel about USPS is cheaper under 12, but well, it's cubic rate, right? So if you can keep your if you can keep your item at a 12 by 12 by 12, because that's one cubic foot, then your your rate's gonna be cheaper deep until you get to five pounds. So you just you just gotta you just gotta do the math, and the longer you've been doing it, the better you get at it. But there's plenty of people out there that will help you if you have problems. Anyway, don't mind the little the little noisemaker in the other room. <laughs> okay, so we got we did that. What do we got here? What's my next one? Okay, five pounds. That's a UPS for sure, for sure. All right, so let me share. So what we're gonna we're gonna go through a few things probably that that we talked a little bit about last week, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's a new tab. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen tabs open, and you guys know I'm gonna get sidetracked. So, hi, Lori. All right. <laughs> it's kind of infectious, isn't it? Um, what was this? Two two things I'm going to talk about real quick because there's the links. These two links are down in the description. Um, this one right here. Am I sharing? Probably not. Share. This one right here. It's called Retro Waste is the website. Um, this is a list of vintage lamp manufacturers. Um, and so it is without question that the most glorious lamps are vintage. They just didn't know how to make them cheap back then. Fortunately, if you held on to your great grandmother's Tiffany lamp, you are holding on to quite the valuable piece now. But did you know there are other vintage lamps besides Tiffany? Did you guys know that? Hi, Lulu. I know you knew that. From Art Deco to 1970s contemporary, we tried to list as many lamp manufacturers as we could find. Did we forget one? Leave it in the comments. So here is a list, Aladdin Industries, um, Aridulce. Anybody who has a problem with my pronunciation of things can, can come sit in my chair. Um, Art. Artemide, Bradley and Hubbard, Craftsman, Gustav, Stickley, Classic, Dirk Van Erp. Oh my gosh, I have to remember to write that down because we have to talk. I have to show you that one. Um, sorry, I can't write and, and talk at the same time. Death. So so look through these: Frank Art, Fulper, Handel Company, Heinz, H. G. McFadden, McFadden. Jefferson Glass, uh, Light Allure, Mantle Lamp Company, Mo Bridges, Moss Manufacturing, Moeller, Nelson, Oluse, Pearpoint, Phoenix Glass, Pittsburgh Lamp. There's just Stife, the Stifle Lamp, Tiffany Studios, so on and so forth. So I, the, the link to this is down in the description. I didn't, um, so that gives you an idea. It gives you the time frames. So you should be able to tell from the time frame, mid-century, modern, um, you know, 70s. You have you have so much. There's so much to to. You have um, Danish modern, mid-century modern. You have Chrome. You have Royal Hagar is another one. And Poli with and Verde. You have spun spaghetti. All of these things come from. The, all of those could be considered mid-century modern. And then you have the um, Hollywood Regency and you have, it just goes on and on and on. You have the antique ones that, you know, the chandeliers and the check and that kind of stuff. All right, out of here so that I don't do that one again. The other one that I wanted to show you is Atomic Ranch. This link is also down in the description. Is T in here? Hi, T. How are you? 
and Maria and Boatman Boatman. Hi, everyone. So Atomic Ranch Interior Design, they have this nice little thing, Bright Ideas, How to Collect Era Lamps and Lighting. And these are really the sleek ones, but they're, you can't even, I, I did um, a search on lighting trends for 2022 and they're all over the place. There's no trend. There, there's no, I'm, I'm just going to call myself Martha Stewart's assistant right here. There's no trend. Do what you like. Just do what you like. So here you go. Along with your furniture, lighting will contribute to the mid-century look in your home. But how do you go about collecting vintage mid-century modern lamps that will be authentic pieces in your collection? Here are some basics to get you started. So know the look. Um, like mid-century architecture, furniture, and textiles, the lamps from this period have a geometric shape, simple lines, and space-aged feel. Look for these for the shapes such as globes, hourglasses, and rings to kickstart your search. In terms of materials, mid-century modern lamps were made with a myriad of materials, including ceramic, wrought iron, brass, and fiberglass, and also wood. I'm going to put that in there because they don't have that in there. Several famous lamps include the Bubble Lamp Collection by George Nelson for Howard Miller. And I don't know if Howard Miller was in that list, but like they said, they didn't get them all. The Artichoke Lamp by Paul Henningsen for Luis Poulsen in 1958. And the Illuminator Lamp by Achille, I'm going to butcher this, Castelloni in 1954. A few facts about these lamps. George Nelson's fav famous lamps, while now sold by Herman Miller, were originally designed for a separate lighting company owned by Herman's son, Howard Miller. The Howard Miller Company is no longer active. And what does that mean? That means that those are going to be sought after anything that was made from Howard Miller. Also, while Charles and Ray Eames, if you guys do not know about Eames and Eames era, I, I beg you, E-A-M-E-S, I beg you to look them up. You will find Eames era stuff everywhere, but you won't know what it is if you don't um, familiarize yourselves with that. That might be a good actual whole topic to talk about. Let me write that down. Eames era design. All right, you will see stuff that's Eames era. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Right along with Frank Lloyd Wright. If you don't know who he, who he is, look him up too. All right, off track. Uh, Eames era, where was that? Are often credited with designing lighting. This myth, they did not. They left lighting design to other designers. Evaluate your piece. When you evaluate a mid-century modern lamp, there are a few things to watch for. First, look at the condition. Is there any damage? If so, does it look repairable? Check for evidence of past repairs or repainting. Any previous modifications may decrease the value of the piece. If the lampshade is made of glass, pay particular attention to any damage to the shade. Glass lampshades often constitute a large portion of the overall value. Lampshades, period. Isn't that gorgeous? You may not like this lampshade. You can put any kind of lampshade you want on any kind of lamp. But if that is the original lampshade that came with this lamp, you're in like sin. You'll want to check that the lamp works. But before you do, look at the condition of the cord. <laughs> Don't look at it while it's in your hand, plugging it into the wall, please. You might get a little tingle. Does it look old or damaged? If not, a previous owner may have already replaced it. If it has any exposed or frayed wires, don't plug it in. <laughs> You'll need to replace it. You can often do so with a lighting kit, but you may need to take it to a professional depending on the type of the lamp. Just go on to YouTube. It's so easy, you guys. I, I kid you not. Once you've looked at the condition, try to find the manufacturer. Turn the lamp upside down and look at the bottom. The manufacturer mark may be a label embossed stamp or raised imprint if it also may be etched in it also may be underneath the felt if there's felt on the bottom 
and also maybe in just some weird inconspicuous place that you would never think. Uh, and I kid you not. Um, if there are no clues on the bottom, check the rest of the piece, including the bulb socket. That would be this piece right here, which we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, sometimes the manufacturer imprint is there on the metal. Look on the lampshade too, though don't assume that the base and the shade came from the same manufacturer. There are a few major companies that might mean you've struck gold. Stifle, Lewis Polson, Howard Miller, George Kovacs, George Nelson, and Jonathan Adler. The lamps from these companies are a hot commodity, so you may want to hold out for a piece from one of them. So open up this link, come down to the bottom here, and, and, and write these guys down and go research them. Let's see. Hi, Denise. Who else did I miss? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. People do all kinds of things, Lulu. Um, yeah, I got fiberglass lampshades. It's on my list, Jeremy. You know me too well. All right. This is a really good um, quick tutorial on some mid-century modern lamps. They don't even come close to touching everything. Nobody could. It would take forever. That's why it's such a hot thing. I mean, let's just look at this. I want to show you guys something. Here I have Google. Vintage lamps. You've got, or let's just go back one. Vintage, vintage lamp almost. You have replacement parts. You have bases. You have makers. You have lamps. You have shades. You have parts. You have for sale. And then you have a vintage lamp Burgini. Ha ha, that was funny. Um, oh, bet I bet I'm not. Am I still sharing? Okay. Whew. Because you know I'm good at that. All right. So. Let's go out of here. And let's go back to here. Vintage lamp replacement parts. We touched on this. And now I'm trying to, so I've worn a hat for so long for the last few years that this part of my face is not the same color as this part of my face. Try and fix that. So there you go. Um, <laughs> TMI maybe, I don't know. Um, then you go shopping at Jan's and she has most everything. I mean, this section right here is, is well he must be having he must be having some fun in there i i want to show you this because there is not a part or a piece out there that you cannot get you have slag glass lamps stained glass lamps bridge lamps oil lamps floor lamps kerosene lamps reflector lamps up here at the top brass shades light fixtures Lampshades, ovals, hurricane lamps, lamp sockets. So last week, I think we looked at this one right here. So there are so many parts and pieces. And if you are repairing a vintage lamp, you need, you really need to, unless you're just doing it for yourself, you really need to find these pieces that go with that exact lamp. You can get the you can get repops. They're gonna look like. Let's do this. You can get. Is this not gonna open up? I hate Pinterest. I mean, I don't hate it, but it's hard to. Okay, there's pieces in here that are bright. We could see it better before. So let's just close this. There's pieces in here that are bright brass. They could very well be, period. They could be repops. So if you are refinishing a lamp that looks like this, the last thing that you want to do is get a piece that looks like this to put on this. You want to get a piece that looks like this. Oh, what? 
to put on this, especially if you are redoing it to resell. Okay. So, hey, there's Martha Stewart. There's my boss. So you have all of these thousands of different styles of lamps and you have all of these parts you can go with plastic you can go with brass you can go with aluminum you can go with metal metal and that leads right into this that i want to talk about lampshade harps did i even pull what do i got here bulbs Pieces. I didn't pull up a specific one on these. This piece right here, this whole brass piece right here is called a harp. This is what supports your shade. And in order to have a shade, you have to have a harp. Now this one right here, you can see is adjustable so that you can make it taller which is really a, a cool feature because that means that you can use it on several different types of lamps. And you and then you see these two little pieces down here at the bottom. You pull those up and you squeeze that harp together and then it, it slides into this piece right here. And then you have your finial up here on top, which you unscrew and you put your shade on and then you screw that back on. I'm assuming that the majority of you know what I'm talking about because you've had a lamp in your life or two, correct? So let's let's look at these at, at harps because vintage. <clears throat> there are many, 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 many different styles as you are going to see right here and the same with finials now if you have a lamp let's go with the czechoslovakian uh, a bohemian glass lamp and it had a shade on it nine times out of ten all right a hundred times out of ten there is a finial on the top that goes with that lamp these this finial is made to go with this lamp harp which holds the shade most of the time i'm looking to see now here's here's a a very odd one learning about lamp harps maybe we should go check that this whole thing out you got all kinds of different lamp harps, but Jan has a bunch of these, my friend Jan, and a bunch of harp pieces. All of these pieces go for good money, and they do not all fit on the same lamps. That's why there's so many of them. See how this one is tall and kind of oval. This one's kind of hourglassy. This one right here is really oddly shaped every lamp out there i mean you know it's it's kind of like it's kind of like soda or pop or soda pop or however you, you say it wherever you're from there's a million different kinds this is the same with lamp pieces so if i antique desk harp brass banker lamp if i pulled up um vintage Let's see. Let's see how many this one right here should have. This has got a glass. It's all glass, but see that? See that finial on top that's holding that glass piece on? That is original to this lamp. It's not going to let me make it any bigger. Because why would it? It's a Cupid. Let's see if they've got a better picture of it. And it's got 
all of these pieces that were made specifically to hold this glass shade to this lamp. If somehow this gets lost or broken, can you find another one to put on there? Something? Yes, but it will never fit the same unless you are lucky enough to find this exact one. Um, so every lamp that you see that holds a shade is going to have some form of a finial. So let's just do that. Vintage. Let's spell this wrong. Should do this. All right. This is a, an acrylic finial display stand. Antique lamp supply, our favorite place to go look for lamp stuff. Look at these. Is that all the bigger that's going to get? Not very big. Look at these. Lamp finial decor. Rejuvenation hardware. Um, antique lamp supply. See these finials? They are specific to certain lamps, or here's a vintage amber diamond quilted on from eBay. Here's a brass one. They have wooden ones. They have ceramic ones. They have glass ones, uh, tall ones, short ones, fat ones, skinny ones. <laughs> Think I'll go eat some worms. <laughs> Here we go. Lamp finial display, new. Finials not included. Great for Aladdin collectors. Look at these finials. B and P lamp. Uh, we talked. I talked about B and P lamp a little bit in the in the previous in part one. So you can tell this red one right here, this black one right here, this one right here. I think this one. Let's do this. That's not going to do it. This purple one, this white one, this black one, this red one, and this green one all have a genie on them. That is Aladdin, and I'm pretty sure that this is Aladdin, too. I don't think they're all Aladdin. However, I could be wrong. But um, here's a Aladdin alakite lamp finial turnkey. So one thing, one thing that that I do myself personally, <clears throat> if, if you're, hi Dory, if you're at an estate sale um, and they have a huge workshop or a barn, say it's a, say it's a, 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 a farm or somewhere out in the country or they have, there are there different threads on these or are they standard? Um, that one I can't answer. We'd have to look it up. I think that the majority of them are the same thread size, though. I could be wrong. It happens frequently. Um, but I know from my experience of, of changing over and stuff like that, they're all pretty much the same. However, back we'll go back in a minute. You'll see the pipe pieces, and they are threaded. There's different, all, diff all different things. So that's something to look for too. And I don't think I have them with me, but calipers are a good thing to have. Dial caliper. I just get the digital ones. Dial calipers are a pain. If you don't know how to, if you don't know how to use a caliper, then just get a cheap pair of digital calipers at Harbor Freight or order them off of, off of eBay, not Amazon. I'm just saying, unless, unless you want to order them off of Amazon. Okay. So back to what were we talking about? that I get sidetracked for my own self. Finials, harps, finials. Wow, where was I? Let me add this to the stream and see where I was. It's not going to help me because it went away. Finial sizes. Talked about that. What was I talking about before that? <laughs> it did. 
So we did that. Aladdin, we were there. Boy, I hate it when that happens. Ugh. All right. So we'll just leave it there. It'll hit me in the middle of something else. I can tell you that right now. Um, harps before that. Yep. So finial lamp replacement pieces are super hot. They're super expensive. I mean, I'm just, so I'm going to show you. Oh, I was, I was saying when I go to an estate sale or something and they have a large shop, and you notice in the pictures, don't just look at the stuff in the pictures. Look at how the house is decorated. I mean, if you're hunting for a certain thing, they put pictures out on some of the bigger estate sales. Those pictures are out weeks before the, the estate sale. And you can really blow them up on your computer and, and, and study them. If the gal did crafting and the guy and the guy did crafting and, and was handy, I can guarantee you, you are going to find a lot of parts and pieces to a lot of things. All of those jars that have nails and screws and nuts and bolts in them, you may want to give those a look-see because you will be amazed at the pieces that you find in there if you familiarize yourself with some of these pieces. This was in the bottom of a, of a bucket. This is a brass finished swag light kit, 12 feet. It's got the, I'm not going to open it up, but it's got the little, the little clicky. It's got the cord. It's got everything in it. They wanted $2 for this. I don't know where, where um, but they did not get it because this was left over after the estate sale and I helped them clean it out and I got it for free. These things right here are expensive. This is a good 20 bucks, a good 20 buck trip to the store. And you know what? You don't even need to have, um, you don't even need somebody to teach you how to do this. There's instructions in here. It is so easy to rewire a lamp. This, I bought these two lamps. They're two exactly the same. Some of these lamps, you'll see the same little gal, you'll see come up and they'll have a parasol as a shade. These two did not. I have two of them. I bought them off of whatnot, as a matter of fact, from the two glassy sisters. And they didn't want anybody to plug them in so they cut the cords and they said that when they were selling them so you cannot just use anything in these you want to keep the integrity of this this on off switch unless you want to just completely replace it well i just need to stop by the hardware store because i haven't this just screws off do, 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 do. There's your washer, right? So this would go in here like this. And you take your washer and you take your little nut and you put it back on there, all right? That's, that's that. You don't want to do anything other than hand tightening when you're dealing with glass. Not my style either. I'm not going to keep them. I bought them to resell them. I got them cheap. Will I replace this? No, I will not. Because there's two screws here. And these, they total, I'm dripping. They totally needed to be replaced. When, when I read that, do you see the plastic has all crumbled off and you have bare wires? <laughs> you totally don't want to be using these. So this is super simple. I'm just going to go and get a new light cord to matching and I'm going to take it off of here and off of here and I'm going to replace the cords and the cords and I'm going to put this back on here and I'm going to do 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 like that and I'm going to use the same one 
You can get a new one if you want to. It's not going to be fun to find one like that. All I need is two cord kits. So I will go to the, I'll stop at the hard little hard. I can order it online, but I drive by past the hardware store every day. So, and you could put a colored light bulb in there. That is an easy, just an FYI. Pick up the screws, nails, nuts, bolts, washers. Having a home, you will never be disappointed. True. I got rid of a bunch of that stuff when I moved. You can also have too many. But I saved all the, the screws that we've taken out of the basement here, and I have been reusing them. Sure, it isn't a little guy. Nope, this is two girls. Is that what you're talking about? These are little women. She's holding a, a bouquet of flowers. I think that's what, anyway, so. <laughs> tad bit of a mess with that. So on, on that, those are parts that you're, you're going to find. Um, you will find a lot of these kits like this because Grandma wanted her light fixed, and Grandpa bought the parts years ago, and he never got to it, and he never got to it, and he never got to it. Grandma finally just said, screw this, and got a new light. <laughs> and this sat in the garage or the shop forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, <laughs> and then somebody had the opportunity to buy it for $2. And why only two dollars? Because people don't buy this stuff, and they wanted to price it cheap so it would go away. And even at even at two dollars, and even at fifty percent off on the last day, and even at they probably would have given it to them for fifty cents, it still didn't sell. Find these things. The silver screw is neutral. Yeah, I'm. Yep. Find these things and and just those those little parts right there. I mean, that's that's new old stock. It's it's done. It's it's sealed. So look for these things. You will find them. You will find sockets. You will find even even electrical sockets. You're gonna find all of that stuff. Man, if you can go, if you can go to a estate sale where the where one of them, because could be a woman or a man, was an electrician. Holy moly. Holy moly is all I can say. Wiring, they'll have spools of the wiring. You just clip off a piece, you have your own wire, like stereo speaker wire. You see that, you see that in a lot of estate sales too, that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, so I, I digress. You can use it for all kinds of things. So the other, the next thing, <clears throat> is light bulbs vintage light bulbs kind of like candles black to brass or your ass is grass <laughs> for sure joy for sure for sure the nice thing about these is you don't have to know if the fuse is shut off <laughs> do you know how to do a swing arm floor lamp it's intimidating so i haven't done it yeah, you just take it apart. Okay, now I can say that not being a smarty pants because I'm not trying to be a smarty pants because I've done that kind of work for years. I built Freightliner trucks. I was a welding inspector. I was raised on a dairy farm. So I have that background. So that doesn't mean it's okay for me to go to say to you guys, it's easy when somebody else is scared to death to do it. There are thousands of videos. Here, let's just do this. Let me just Let me just do this. How to replace the wiring in a vintage. Let's just do this swing arm floor lamp. Rewiring a swing, swing arm floor lamp. 
Now, the best advice, here's another one, how to rewire an old floor lamp. 12 minutes, 18 minutes, I've watched this guy. Um, try a light floor lamp. The safe way to rewire a table lamp. How to rewire a lamp. How to rewire a vintage torture lamp. How to assemble a swing arm floor lamp. Three light floor lamp repair. The best advice that I can give you when you pull up a video, when you do what I just did and you pull up a video, watch the first five. They have the usually have the most views. And each person will have their own specific way on how they do something. And if you watch them and study of them, you will learn certain little tricks that one person has that the other person might not have. And if you, and I know you all are, are smart enough that you can put those together, you can cut yourself down. Hey girl, hey! You can cut yourself down some time by, by looking at these little tricks. So anytime I pull up a video, to learn something, I will watch, almost almost always watch the first five. Yeah, th they are. They're not, I'm, and I'm not going to put any, even just this right here, just these two little wires right here is overwhelming for somebody. But I'll tell you what, you can do it. You can do it. You, you've been picking up sticks. <laughs> you can do it. I know you can, you know, and, and even if you just buy an old lamp, that's kind of crappy looking that, that should probably be thrown away and use it as a practice lamp to tear apart and put together, then you're not possibly ruining something that's worth a lot of money, right? If that makes sense. It, it never it never hurts to do that and so i know you guys can do it four five six what did i miss pick up sticks <laughs> took me a second um they even had to dummy proof the instructions lol unplug the yes and un unplug the lamp yep and and they and they should because um somebody once told me that would be Jan. Not everybody knows everything. So I'm, I try to be really good about you guys should, or you may, or you might, or you might not, because I don't want to take for granted that just because I know something means that you know something and you may know something that I don't know. I'm sure there are plenty of you that know things that I don't know. So Rather than making a generalized statement like, um, we all know that Pendleton items are, are highly sought after. Well, no, there's probably a lot of people out there that don't. And somebody's going right now. How can you not know that a Pendle that Pendleton is is sought after? Or how can you not know that? Um, let, let me find. Let me think of something that. I think is super obvious. How could we all not know that um, Charmin toilet paper is really sought after? Because some people don't like Charmin so toilet paper <laughs> or they've never ha been able to use it. Oh, that's hilarious. I don't know where I come up with this stuff. All right. Wait a minute. We're going. I got to I got to mark some stuff off that we did. Um, all right, we're going to do light bulbs. We're, we're doing a part two from the part one of the stuff that I didn't Pendleton. <laughs> um, all right. What do we got here? Is this the one? Nope. I don't want that one. We did that one. that one here we go here we go here we go here we go there are so many vintage light bulbs that it's not even funny what we're seeing here though are are repops right you got the chandelier you got the decorative i'm going across the top here 
LED, the Globes, the Edisons, these are all lookalikes, outdoors, transparent, large, aesthetic, dimmable, bathroom. What else? Oh, it, it goes on and on and on. But these ones, like I have in my hand right here, like this one right here, a set of five. This one's flame. These light bulbs right here. These babies, you are, are echo. Look at the keywords here. Set of five, 25 watt flame, amber painted light bulbs for vintage art deco lighting. These are the five. I wonder if this has a, and then, and then they're going to show you some of the different lamps and and they're going to show you this. When was that? The Saturday evening post. They're going to show you some of this stuff, which I should have done. These are coming out of the Saturday evening post. People are selling this ad, this one piece of paper right here, sometimes up to 20, 30, 40 bucks. So if you see these old magazines and they're tortured, this is what you want them for. There's your bolo for this week. <laughs> All right. Can't stay on track. I can't do it. You will find these light bulbs. That's LED. You will find. Let's let's go back over here. I want the true. Okay, here we go. Antique light bulb, carbon filament with Westinghouse base, fifty to fifty-two volt Shelby ray lamp. This was found in somebody's grandpa's workshop. See that 16 on there? See that? They're showing you everything. The little um, nipple on the top. See the wiring, how it's, it, it almost looks like a rug beater. If you guys know what a rug beater is, they would make these high rug beaters that look like a heart. There's the end of it. And there it is plugged in, showing you that it works. And it's amazing to think that these light bulbs still work after all this time, but they do. And I don't know how much of this I showed last time because Jan was on and we were looking at a lot of different lamps in her basement, which I wanted to look at, which is one of the main reasons why I decided to do a part two of this. I could do a part three. I don't know. We'll see. I think that I'm giving you guys enough information and enough things to look at, and you can come back and come back if I don't annoy you too much. Hang on a second. And, and refresh your mind on things. While I'm right here, I want to show you guys these bases. You will find them. Sometimes you will find them with the light. Sometimes you will find these bases. This base right here. Jan had a bunch of them in her drawer. It looks like nothing. It is, it is significantly something. And these bases alone, we're going to talk about this. It's on my next, the next thing we're talking about. I just happen to see this right now are worth a ton of money this just just this antique property of new ny edison company new york carbon balloon tipped light bulb with the socket 199 dollars. i kid you not and they sell for that on the down low regular I have a video about some really interesting lamps that I made for that guy, and it's on my channel. But uh, drop the link, Charnel. Drop the link. Drop it like it's hot. You're blue. You can you can do it. Joy, Joy, you're not blue, but you will be in a second. You guys are absolutely welcome to drop links that pertain to what we're talking about. Um. Okay. So 
Let's go back out of this one. Then you have this one, Antique Working Early Edison. See this? Sometimes these, um, this is a display. Working Edison Carbon Balloon Tipped Light. Bulb, bulbs with display. I would like to think that, I wonder if they show any. That was actually a, there, that was actually a real light socket at one point in time you can right there would have been a pull chain and down here would have been where the wires or whatever would have been they're not showing it they're not going to show the bottom of it there we go that's where the wires would have come from so and could be used again could be used again I think I need to get listing. <laughs> I think so. Um, so keep your eyes open for these light bulbs. I just about had a heart attack when poor Jan, she's kept more stuff since I've met her than, she, and she's always, oh, I threw so much of that away. Well, you can't go back and change what you don't have now. But she was going to throw a light bulb away a while back. And I was like, don't throw that away. Don't do it. <laughs> and I'll send her pictures because we'll be talking. She's one of my friends. I talk to her daily. Look at these. Any any of these that, that are like this. They're asking $8.99 for this one. Antique light bulb by Westinghouse. 200 watt from Antique Pendant Church Lamp. Lamp and it works. I personally think they should be asking... A heck of a lot more money for that. But who am I? I'm just here critiquing. All right. Westinghouse lighting. <laughs> this is brand new. It can't be. Let's see if it's going to let me have her over it. This has got to be a repop. All of them pull chain socket. Man, I don't know what it is. Well, I do because I have an old house. And to have the period, what were we looking at that I got sidetracked being offered? To have a period house and have the period lighting fixtures in it um, is everything. It's just everything. If that's what you're doing. All right, what do we got here? And I do, I do, Joy. You know it. All right, so now let's talk about, I gotta cross it off my list, vintage lamp bases. It's not all about the bulb. It's not all about the socket. It's not all about the shade. You gotta have the bottom of the lamp. Here we go. And if, and look at all of these different bases. These are just for like the, the, the poofy, poofy Hollywood Regency vintage brass Victorian style. How many different, um, <laughs> how many different keywords can we use here? Antique, they got brass, vintage, antique. So let's just open this one up. Oh, yeah. And and if you look at what Lulu just put in, used light bulb recycling ideas, the things that the crafts that people do with them. So here is some vintage lamp bases right here. I don't really consider these to be a lamp base, but they're a socket. They're part of, of it. Look at all the different bases. So you had a glass lamp, did you? And the glass part broke, did it? I have the same tablecloth. <laughs> now you have this beautiful cast brass metal lamp base part to sell. Don't you? Yes, you do. You know what? That didn't. So. Wait. 
if I was only looking through Google. Look at uh, this is what I dislike about eBay's new look at there's my all right there's my blue lamp similar this this one has a, a lampshade so here's a base they're just selling the base here's a lamp replacement parts or repair for vintage and it has a bunch of different pieces here is a vintage heavy glass lamp base only here is a brass one. So um, this is a silver plated metal lamp base replacement part now. And they've got bulbs, all different pieces. This, this is six antique swirl green slag glass bent curved lampshade replacement panels. They should be selling those like the other guy did last year. Here's a similar lamp to my blue ladies. And you would have a bulb there. So let's see, let's see, let's just take a gander here, solds, ended recently, um, vintage art deco jadeite brass floor lamp pole stand replacement parts base and the rods. Do you guys remember? how to figure this out because I'm going to show you. So it's sold for a best offer. I will show this to you every time until everybody knows it. Copy. eBay. Go to your seller hub. Go to research, Terapeak product research. Paste that title in there. Hit research. They sold that for $145. So Uh oh. How far out did I have to go? Let's see. We already looked at that. That, that, that. Was it this one? Vintage. This one. This, this vintage floor lamp piece that they had listed at $399, that they draw, they had it on a 50% off sale. And at $199, either they sent somebody an offer or they took a best offer of $145. So not bad. And if you don't price high, you don't know, you guys. Let's see. This was light bulbs. This is uh, mm, there. All right. Well, it's jadeite and all of that, and I agree it seems excessive, but, you know, um, sometimes people are recouping money, and they're still paying fees on all of it now because that's what happened. People would sell stuff for $9.99 with $200 shipping, thinking that they were putting one over on eBay. Well, eBay caught on to that real quick, didn't they? Antique Jefferson Glass Black Rose Floral Pancake Lamp. 10 inch replacement base only. And fifth, uh, 2775. Let's look and see how big this is because I have a feeling it's heavy. But that's pretty. Squirrel. Uh, okay. This is. You guys can not see that part, can you? 10 and a half inches, it looks like. And it's glass. So it probably weighs a, a bit. Yep. That's very pretty. We went out of that one. 
All right. Antique floor lamp, heavy base metal and marble. They must have given that one away. All right. Oh, this is a this is this is perfect. Couldn't have, couldn't have done this better if I wanted to, because this is something you're gonna talk about too. So we'll just swerve off to this because it's right here. Vintage lava lamp, original black replacement base only works great. 1997. Here's another one and another one. And another one. Holy moly. Dren, I went to the bins in Milwaukee, Oregon, and met uh, my friend Tara there. And she's she doesn't do YouTube, but she does a lot of um, Tara Mom of Four, I think, is, is what her she is on Instagram. Anyway, she and her husband come up from the Corvallis area, and they go to the bins here. And so... I have met her a couple of times in one week, but anyway, so while we were there, somebody had found <laughs> this piece and I was like, oh, that, and somebody else had this piece. I should probably, these 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 lamps are notorious for stopping and who knows how old it was and who knows if you can look at the bottom of the wax on there it's all gross it's got mold in it which we didn't know we plugged it in and we ran it for quite some time and it just did not flow up and down these bulbs are expensive for these older lava lamps and they have to sit way down. They have to be tiny. We literally had to go to a specialty store to get them. This one's busted. It looks like I can see the thing. That's funny because I unplugged it three days ago because I told Dren, I said, it doesn't, that's got to go. It's gross. It's and I, and anyway, so needless to say, this piece right here <laughs> will sell for what? What, what? what did we see there? 30, 40 bucks? Now, if you want to get crafty, these things are glued on, and I'm not going to put too much pressure on them, but you can break this wrap it in a towel, put it in a bucket, break it, and get this off. I wouldn't suggest that you do this because if all they need is that piece, the base, they probably have this piece. Um, anyway, so this part is going to go away and repair a lava lamp. Thank you, Lulu. Uh, I don't think this, I, I don't know, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm not going to, I mean, I, I will put a little more pressure on it outside <laughs> where if it makes a mess, it's not going to be any big deal, right? Um, anyway, so let's go back here to sharing. Uh, where was that? Nope, that one can go away too. There, uh, did I get rid of it? Nope, oh, there it is. Vintage lava light lamp gold tone aluminum starlight base only. So this one right here. There's some cool lava lights out there, you guys. If you're not aware. Um, I just wanted that. There we go. See how this has the stars, the pinholes in it? So when it lights up, not only does it light up the, the lava part, not only does it light up the... You have to have a special light because that light provides enough heat to, to melt the wax to then allow it to go back up and forth. And the problem with this one is it had lost enough fluid out of it over the years <coughs> that... Um, the, the wax that was in there. So can you, can you see the wire ring in there? 
Can you see? I need to hang on a second here. I can't see what I'm showing you. Okay. Can you see the wire ring in the wax? That warms up with the the heat of the that light bulb. So you can't just put I did share the screen. You cannot You have to be able to get the solidified wax in here. This wax in here has has is gross. It's got to go. That's the problem with that one. I know it looks like it just unscrews, but I don't think that one does. Anyway, so let's go back to this. And all right. $35.29.95, which is more like the one that I just had. Um, I wonder where it has the date on it. I don't think mine, mine might be night. Oh, let's see. Warning. I don't see a date on this one. I don't think mine's, I don't think that one's terribly old. Um, but doesn't matter because it'll fit. The newer ones will still fit the older ones. So the bases to, wow, apparently there are, see this one right here has the top. Let's check this out. See if it shows. They should just screw off. Yes, they should. Um, I have a feeling that somebody may have tampered with that one. Let's do this. This one looks very similar to mine. It's got the same on the bottom there. Same for that. If they show, I, w I was hoping they would show the inside of the cap. The nice thing, too, about these is the cord on them is black. So if somebody, I mean, a, can, a rattle can of, of paint will take care of that if you if they don't like that color, right? So many, many, many lamp bases have sold. I don't know why they have a globe lamp, light lamp base. Oh, this is the center. This is the bottom part. This right here. Back to the bases. This piece right here is the see this lamp right here how it's got one two buckle my shoe three that, that this piece right here is probably this piece right here for that lamp if that makes sense what donna <laughs> really donna you're in so much trouble i love you so much thank you Share this. I am sharing the screen. What? How am I not sharing the screen? I'm sharing this. I'm sharing the screen. It even tells me on the bottom that I'm sharing it. Donna, you're the best. I love you so much. Thank you. I do. I have a monitor over here that I look at every uh, every little bit. Okay, I am sharing the screen. Doug, I'm going to take your 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 privileges away if you do that to me again. I'm just joking because um, I have a bad habit of not sharing the screen. All right. Thank you so much, Donna. So here's a slag glass base. We are going to go out of this and we are going to go out of this. I want, and we are going to talk about vintage lava lamps. You guys, there are some freaking cool 
lava lamps out there. I just, I just, I knew, I knew there were lava lamps. I knew they were worth money. I knew, I knew. I had no idea. Look at this. This is amazing. Incredible fat lava table lamp. This isn't one, this isn't what you guys think it is. This just looks like lava. I think it almost looks like a vomit. There's a, a vomit style. $950. Mid-century modernism. Is there more? You better stop, Donna. <laughs> oh, you guys are hilarious. I have five milk glass hobnail shades you need to list. Don't let me stop you. Don't let me stop you. Okay, this... Oh my gosh, where was it? This one reminds me of um, the, Jeff the the Jetsons. Math most Telstar lava lava lamp sixty from the sixties. I'm assuming vintage designed by Edward Craven Walker. So when you see this stuff right here, Edward Craven Walker, you want to just go doinky doink. And go check him out on Google. Right? Copy. Open. See what Google tells us about him. Right there. Edwin, Edward Craven Walker Wikipedia. He has his own page. Was a British inventor who invented the psychedelic astro lamp also known as dun 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 the lava lamp <laughs> can't help it if i'm a nerd the can't 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 help it that is a cool lamp so oh man i'm giving myself away <laughs> Look at these. Look at this one. Would you look at that? The decorator. Oh, we'll open it up. It's probably going to go to Pinterest. Your email. Vintage love. Oh, hey. I need to put this. I need to put this link in the in the description. Clickamericana.com. Vintage lava lamps. They like wild way out now. 1960s and 1970s. Lava lamp, light lamps, a decorator light of a million moving shapes. There you go. Look at that advertisement. That is cool. So, I mean, you know, we have to have something to illuminate our life, right? And there are so many cool ways. Wow, this is cool. I don't think I've ever seen one like this. Wax. We could just go down a huge deep rabbit hole. So, you know, wax lava lamp rainbow 1983 vintage lava lamp USSR. And look at the, I don't know how well it's coming through you guys. Do you see the legs down here? It's kind of like that atomic one. Let's see if, let's see if. There's a better view in here. That's really cool. See the legs down there? They almost look like they're clear. I'm going to go swimming. I'm going to go in the pool. You're going to go in the pool? All right. Have fun. Anyway. Familiarize yourself with this stuff because when you see it out in the wild or even in in a antique mall or somewhere, you'll have an idea as to whether, oh, should I get that? Well, yeah, you probably should. Look at the price. See if it's something that you want to, you know. Um, here's one that, that doesn't look too assuming. A vintage large lava lamp, magma lamp, table lamp, old new stock, rocket lamp. 
it says right on there rocket lamp but they did not put that in the title so um there you have that this account i follow on instagram recently came up on a collection of like 20 of these i can't imagine how much money she's oh yeah so that's cool <laughs> squirrel a porcelain pigeon lamp from the 30s for 80 bucks oh man i got a, i got oh i wonder where that is it's in storage dang it i got one of those black panther mantle lamps for two dollars so you have oh all right i guess we're done with that now we're going to talk about vintage fiberglass lampshades because holy moly 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 not only are they cool they're worth a poop ton of money and they come in all different shapes and sizes and this was another one another style to talk about and that one isn't really it's 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 textured fiberglass but and some people call it spaghetti art hi jody thanks for popping in look at these fiberglass oh my goodness lampshades and can i just tell you any Thing that has atomic on it or looks atomic on it is hot it's hot it's hot it's hot it's hot period these square shaped ones five mid-century modern let's let's look at these because they're they're different do they have the fiberglass cylinder inside look at that i would put hollywood regency on that in a heartbeat because um, and not saying that everybody's style is different, right? Gaudy, the gaudy, all of this stuff. They'd love this in Florida. <laughs> As George would even say that. But, um, they this this Hollywood Regency, the 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 gold, the all of it. That's 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 one hundred and ninety five dollars. What we may think is ugly, somebody else will pay a lot of money for. Now, let me just say, if you find one of these lamps and it is beat to all heck, still buy it, still buy it, still buy it. Because these pieces right here, from this right here, and there are people out there that will fix this shade. Don't take the stuff off of it. Sell it as is. I'm, I'm, I, I, I promise you, there's somebody out there that will repair that shade, that fiberglass, or they will take it off and they want it just here. Look, $100. Vintage mid-century fiberglass swirl two-tier barrel lampshade. Uh, amazing. They come in so many different shapes, sizes, colors. 99, 143. Look at this lamp, right? Fiberglass lampshades. This is retro renovation. This person right here is actually showing you how to design a retro mod one. Make your own. Here we go right here. This is this is totally mid-century modern. The lampshade to go with the, the base. Look at all of these atomic designs. Atomic lampshades. Atomic dishes. Atomic anything this is so 30s 20s 30s 40s and 50s i'd say i'm not an expert on that but we'll just go there here is a shade a glass shade 
um, the Raven lamp. Thank you, Lulu. Oh, did you, Maria? Nice. So, what do we got here? I'm trying to look. Okay, so let's look at some mid century modern lamps. Now, I am going to admit to this. I admitted to last week to throwing some lamps away. I threw four of these away. I did. Two of them looked like this. $280, you guys. This has been years. And two of them looked like these. And I could just vomit right now. Yep. Yep, I did. So, we all do stupid things. I did not want to do... I don't even... Don't I, I can't even explain. I, I'm not going to make anything, but... We all get rid of things. We all walk by things that we have no idea. At that time, I knew that they were collectible. And it was just the energy. And it was probably shortly after I got burnt. You know, at, at, at certain times in life, things just go by the wayside. Royal Hager is a thing. Royal Hager is a um, pottery so they also have lamps. So if this lamp broke and you had this, look at this one's damaged. See the damage down? Let's see if they get a bit of a picture. A beautiful pair of pottery lamps by Royal Hager. As you can see in the images, one of the lamps have damage on the bottom. She's still asking 650 as she should. See that? Somebody will fix that. That's a, actually a very, okay, I did pottery for a lady. This is actually a fairly easy thing to fix. Or you can turn the lamp around and not look at it. <laughs> uh, here's a TV lamp. Like I was talking about the Panther. This is a fiberglass shade TV lamp, mid-century modern planter, succulent. There's spots here to put stuff in. Those are very highly collectible. So look. This is the next one that not so much so for floor lamps. We want to go back here. Um, there's simply so many different styles. There's no way anybody could could continuously talk and and teach you everything. You just have to go and look. And just because you think something is ugly doesn't mean somebody else does. They might think it's $1,300 worth of beautiful. <laughs> Hi, BCP. How are you? Would you sell a pair of heavy brass mid-century modern lamps as a pair or separate? I would prop if they're if they're duplicates, if they're exactly the same, I would sell them as a pair. But you may find somebody that just wants one. So I mean that's 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 a choice you make, right? If like see this right here. They have two, it looks like. Huge, unique, vintage, mid-century, modern table lamps, too. And it looks like they're selling them both together. Oh, those are gorgeous, actually. Look at the lampshade. So you walk into an estate sale and you see this kind of stuff and people don't even look at it. There's somebody there that, that does lamps that goes to that estate sale. There's somebody there that specializes in furniture. There's somebody there that specializes in art, right? We're all looking for different things. And those of us that aren't even looking at these bigger things because they're bigger and we may not want to ship them. Look at the light bulb on this one. Oh, it's not even going to. Salvador Dali for Lampera. Wow. You guys know who Salvador? Do you guys know who 
Salvador Dali is. He's a very famous artist. I only know that because I took art history in college. I'm not a smarty, I know it everything thing. I do know some things though, and I do know that. Um, look at that lampshade. Holy moly, 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 moly. Look at that. That's cool. Good stash. You could stash dimes, pennies, nickels, quarters, and 50 cent pieces in that lamp right there, you guys. <laughs> I lost my whole train of thought. What else is new? All right. I was looking for that lamp and it did not take me to that lamp that we were looking at. And we're not talking about huge. Somewhere I closed out a tab on. We'll just do this before we go to the floor lamps. Um, I have it written down here. Vintage. Here we go. Um, images. This stuff is so hot. It's it's not even funny. Mid-century modern Danish modern teak Danish modern wood Danish modern style Danish modern Danish modern Danish modern beat that one into your head this one even has a, a wood style lampshade this stuff mid-century modern Danish modern has been big for a very long time and you can see the prices that it gar that they garner and because it's not our taste, actually, I would, I, I have a china cabinet. I would love to have all of my um, furniture in my house. This seventeen ninety five for the pair. When you have, just like you asked a little bit ago, was it you, Michelle? Just, yeah, Cherish, you guys got to be careful with Cherish's prices because those are interior direct decorators and and frou-frou-ha-ha -ha stuff. Some of it does sell for that. This is, oh, somebody bought a Herman Miller chair for them. Okay. They don't even have shades, but they do have the finials. I can't show you that. There we go. Look at that. They do have what looks to be the original finials. That's a huge thing. $17.95 for the pair. They're going to get darn close to that. So go in and check these out. They're all going to be different. These guys, I probably would raise the price. $2.45. That's a fairly good sized one. $8.99 for one, which is very similar to these two. This is very, um, if you're familiar with Frank Lloyd Wright, he is an architect. He did a lot of buildings. This would fit right into his era. I love him. I have every book he ever put out. Someday I'll list them. Um, you can get 1960s Danish modern sculptural teak mod line floor lamp decorative. Look at these. Go over us. All right. I can't I can't torture myself. This is what I would get. This would be my. All right. Let's look at some floor lamps. Let's look at some. Oh, that's what that was. All right. Okay, um, real quick. Here we go. This is exactly what I want. Mid-century modern floor lamps are, are a big thing. 
and you will see the metal ones, the chrome ones, these ones with, with the, the big bulbs, and you'll see, it's not letting me go. This one is, let's see if it got a better. This one is a pole that goes up inside it. You will see, let's see if we have any in this, these ones. Oh my God. This would, this lamp right here was made to go back behind a couch or a whatever. This, this was in the corner and it came out over your piece of furniture to light up a large area. And you will see these in all chrome with the big chrome balls. Those are highly sought after. Highly. I don't see any. Uh, um, Art Deco, Mid-Century Modern, Hollywood Regency. Here's one. Look at these, you guys. Burn these into your brains. Even if you see them out. An eyeball lamp is what this is called. Nine mid-century floor lamps and design ideas. Eliminating dark corners of the floor lamp. Um, I was hoping to see if they would... Anyway, that one up there is called an eyeball lamp. Here is a tripod mid-century floor lamp. See the way it has the three legs? Oh, I hate these stupid ads. And there's this one right here. They never want to close out. And then they want to know why. There we go. A Linden 65-inch mid-century tree floor lamp. And it's got a marble base. Why? Because it needs something heavy to hold it in place. A Henor. Look up these names. 68-inch column floor lamp. Five feet is 60 inches. So that's, that's five feet, eight inches tall. Look at that gorgeous thing. <laughs> I know I'm crazy. I can't help myself. Yes. Yes, Jody. He did. He did. He had that. Look at these. Swaddler Slim 69 inch novelty. And you see a lot of people have, have you been to Ikea or have you looked on Ikea's website? You will find a lot of lamps at Ikea that look like this. That is how hot this stuff is. You can go to Ikea and probably find something very similar. I love Ikea. I don't care what anybody says. If you're on a budget and you want to, and you want to decorate and you want to get a nice, a nice lamp and, and use it for this style, that's your place to go. Look at this. I would die to have a lamp like this. Hayward's 59 and a half tripod floor lamp. If I ever saw one of these at an estate sale, I would buy it. Jody, if you ever see one of these at an estate sale, buy it for me. I'll pay you back. You could just you could just call me and I'll and I'll and I'll PayPal you the money. Um, two would be even better. Just putting that out there. Um, yep, all of these will come apart. This one, this one would fold, fold. And probably unscrews from the base here. And obviously they have it lit up there, but the cord would be down here. They probably photoshopped the cord out would be my guess. These ones right here, the mid-century tree floor lamps. Lots of times they'll have a uh, three or four on here. And then you have the ones that are um, a tension bar. <laughs> so it would have it would have um, a spring in it and it wouldn't have a base. It would just be the pole and the tension would keep it. I almost got one at the last estate sale I helped set up, except for the fact that my ceilings were too tall for it and, and I wouldn't have been able to use it. Um, this is a 
a Deer Park 59 inch novelty floor lamp. So you're using the weights supposedly. This has all been photoshopped. You can 100% tell. Here you go. Mid-century floor lamp features. And so it's funny because this table is nothing mid-century modern, but the legs are, right? This table is is more craftsman-y, whatever you want to call it. They have done a good job of putting this whole room together, if you like that kind of stuff. Here is a base floor lamp. Uh, starting with a basic design, these medium base floor lamps are a testament to the mid-century modern style. They are simplistic and have simple lines that do not distract from the other decor in the room. Um, I kind of think that distracts because that is gorgeous. All right, here's these paper lantern. These are coming back big time. I wonder... Ikea has a lot of paper light, lights that, that fold out and they light up and they turn, but those are very popular. And I don't remember Tiffany Lamps lighting trends. I bet it's in that one. Let's do, let's look. Yes. These style lamps. This, th these are the, these are new. These, these ones right here. Curry and Company. Um, this is, this is what is hot right now. Copper onion dome pendant light. Um, but these paper style lamps, anything fiber, anything wood, if you're looking for stuff hot, this is the stuff that people are collecting now. Well, isn't that funny? Because all of this stuff, or I shouldn't say collecting, designing with, is literally mid-century modern come back to slap you in, in, in the back. All of this stuff. And these ones right here, the top seven lighting, the, aren't those gorgeous milk glass? I really like the table, though. Um, <laughs> I was looking at that earlier. So, I don't know how much, what time is it? Eight we're, we're doing good. Um, hi, Mike. A while back, you found a faux bamboo floor lamp for 10 bucks. <laughs> yep, who knew, right? Who knew? Here's a real Tiffany lamp. We looked at this earlier. This is a real Tiff Tiffany lamp. This isn't, uh, is this part of my Tiffany style lamps? Yep, got to get that one out of there because I really do have Tiffany lamps. Because you guys, when you have a real Tiffany lamp, you will have at least four digits in your in your price tag. <laughs> now that I said I got rid of two of these, I'm gonna see them all over the place. There should that's not real. That's not a real Tiffany. Tiffany Studios to do, do you guys see the price on that? One hundred and forty-five thousand, eighty-five thousand. Will they get it? Who knows? All I know here is Tiffany Lamps, Christie's.com. Christie's is an auction house. If you don't know, if you do know, well, then you know again. Oh, whatever. Collecting guide, 10 things to know about Tiffany Lamps. I probably should have put that in the description, but how many of us are going to find a Tiffany lamp? We might. Go read up on them. I'm giving you the opportunity here. Collecting guide. Let's see who is this. Christie's.com. Anything you want to know. Many of the leaded glass lamps produced by Tiffany Studios are truly iconic. First introduced at the beginning of the 20th century, they have had a strong international appeal ever since. And why wouldn't they? It's not just that, the shade, it's the base. And so it'll go in here and it will give you the whole shebang about them. Look at that. Would you look at that? <laughs> because you can get tired of me. Oh, that is amazing right there. So we could ooh and ah about this. But there you go. Boy, that one's got all of these little 
tulips inside. Is that a tulip? Let a glass bronze was it? lotus. Excuse me. It's got all of the buds inside. That's gorgeous. All right. Enough with the Tiffany lamps, everybody. And I'm just going to say that in our field. All right. I won't. Most everybody is familiar and knows the word Tiffany. Um, over 26,000 listings on eBay have the word Tiffany style, uh, which is a no, no. Um, I wanted to look up that one lamp that we were talking about. I wrote it down. What did I do with it? And then I took the paper off. Oh, there it is right there. You guys, this guy right here, Dirk Van Erp. That's what you, you when you see this a lamp like this, you probably should take a second look at it or third or fourth or just pick it up and buy it. <laughs> this one's by Luke Marshall and they're sell, they're asking 3100 but that Duke, Dirk, do they have one here? Do they even have one? Here we go. That's not a style, is it? Yep, Erp style. Erp, I'm not even going to look at that. I'm sorry I even showed it. I want a true one. Here we go. This is from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This is a true Dirk. Herp lamp 1912 to 1915. Dirk Van Erp was one of the most important metal workers in California during the arts and crafts. Listen up, Jenny, and any of the rest of you that are down in California. You guys are the ones that are going to see these down there. Tiffany style lamps are going to be more on the West East Coast, right? Okay. One of the most important metal workers in California during the arts and crafts period, he was especially well known for his table lamps, of which this is a particularly fine example in excellent condition and retaining its original patina, the warm orange of the mica shade complete complements the lamp's hand hammered baluster shaped copper base in rich reddish brown. Lamps such as this one were ideally suited to arts and crafts interiors, my home, furnished with geometric oak furniture, similar in hue and simplicity. There you have it. Mica, you guys know what mica is. It's a mineral, if you don't. Um, and it's the title of it is just lamp. And that's probably just that picture. I don't know. Anyway, uh, made in San Francisco. That's, that's a designer to know. So obviously there are plenty of people. Here's Dirk Van Erp Design. Here's another one, Sotheby's Auction House. Gorgeous. It's not going to look, there we go. Wonder if it even says Provenance, Private Family Collection, Piedmont, California, Circa. Circa 1911. I, I'm, I'm giving him a few moments of silence because that's just gorgeous. You had an herb once. Uh, looks like a mushroom almost. Yep. <laughs> You're in so much trouble, Charnel. All right. <laughs> now, I think one of the last things that I really want to talk about is these replacement prisms. If you have, these are the kind of prisms, olive cut prism imported. There are glass prisms and there are crystal prisms. If your 
chandelier or lamp has crystal prisms, you need to make sure you replace the broken ones with crystal prisms and not with glass. Totally different weight, totally different look when the light hits them. Guaranteed somebody out there has them. See these ones right here that have the, um, they look almost iridescent. Who are they asking for these? That bohemian chandelier that I had, the crystal prisms on it have this iridescent and they are crystal. They're bohemian crystals. So there are many, many, many. They're not super expensive if you're getting pre-made, you know, newer ones. Um, this article right here talks all about them. Chandelier parts. So depending on what you're using, these ones right here are antique. See how they have almost a iridescent. There, you can just see it. Faceted ball ended prisms, five inches long. Those are gorgeous. So that's, that's really all I wanted to say about these. If you find a chandelier that's tortured, save the prisms. If you find a chandelier that's tortured, save these glass pieces, right? Remember all of these links, this link, this lamp supply is down in the description as it is on, on my other one, crystal chandelier body parts. Why is that not opening up? All of these arms, these glass arms, all of these pieces, all the pieces, all the pretties, the glass bobache, I think that's how it's pronounced, probably not bobache. And it, you can see here, right there, right there, right there, right there, every one of these has the little wire piece that you hang the crystals from. And this would sit in your chandelier. It would go over the top of this and it would hang. It would have all of your crystal prisms that hang down. That's Terra Peak. We did that. Holy moly, you guys. I got through the majority of it. Without getting too horribly sidetracked for the most part. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. That's what I have for you. There's more. There can always be more. I can maybe do another video another time. But I challenge you to not find something that I showed in this week's video and last week's video and make some money on it. I know you can, and I know you will. Watch the old Disney Pollyanna on how to use chandelier crystals. <laughs> um, you hang mine on the Christmas tree. Absolutely. A lot of people do. Terry, just thanks, Chair. Thanks for saying hi. Um, pretty arts and crafts with a dimmer. Okay. Oh, Lynn, how are you? I haven't, I see you, but I don't see you. Thanks for saying hi. So, you know, that's how I learn a lot of a lot of other things too is by getting sidetracked and going down that rabbit hole. Is it a bad thing? It just depends on what you're doing and what you got for time, right? But when I'm when I'm researching certain things to talk to you guys about, it's a good thing. And then I always find something else when we're when we're looking and that's where you please do. Please do, Ethel. Brett wants to add something regarding old traditional chandeliers. Let us have it. Let us have it. I'm waiting for her to talk. You see things and stuff now. I see things and stuff now from your lives. Very cool. That's good. Because there's stuff, there's so much stuff out there that 
that people do want see the squirrel lamp link for those times we get off track <laughs> thanks lula you guys want a real a real cool bolo that you should be looking for if you don't know already i will go i will go watch that charno hang on a second This is the original Scream mask. It glows in the dark. It is made by Fun World Division. And this is the original costume. Also has the tag in it that came with that mask. You see these masks out there. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys how much this goes for. If somebody wants to pull it up and look, but it should, it'll, it's, it's, I paid a dollar for this and I paid a dollar for this. And I guarantee you, I'm going to get three digits plus two decimal points. Ah. Certain scream masks. You will make a lamp out of an empty scope bottle so you can turn it on when you get out of scope. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. One of these days we'll talk about um, Halloween um, costumes. I should write that one down on my list too. Where did my list go? Do, do, do. I... Oh, man. I already lost my list. No, Eames Era Design. My list of, of topics. Um, Halloween. Halloween is the biggest. It's it's probably more highly collected than Christmas. It's right there. All right, and put that right there. Um, one other um, name to look for in lamps that I will give you. Hi, Amy. If a sh okay, here we go, Brett. If a chandelier is seriously old, the little wires that hold the crystals get brittle and basically dissolve. Same with the chains that hang and their hooks that attach. They are part of the lamp's parts. Correct. Thanks for, thanks for telling us that. Um, they are part of the lamp parts that you can buy and replace. You don't even use pliers, just your fingers. Yes, very much so because they are super -de duper um, delicate to tie pan. No, I haven't. I have not. Um, so look up this guy. M A T H I E U M A T E G O T. There you go. There's there's somebody for you guys to look up for lamps. There are so many names, so many designers that are sought after. I couldn't even begin. I mean, I gave, I, I did show you the one list, but I mean, you just, you can't, you can't, but that person's pretty cool too. Foo, not foo. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope I helped you. I hope you go find something cool. Those little ceramic um, sockets and the light bulbs. I mean, seriously, how easy is it to ship something like that? They're tiny. Eight by 10 by six box. When I ship one of the lamps that I have listed, 
I will do a shipping video for you guys. But um, Toledo and I can't drop links. There you go. Toledo Antique. Go to their YouTube for shipping breakables. All right. I'm going to go check on the little guy and get him some dinner. I appreciate you all coming back week after week to listen to me chit chat about whatever. And I enjoy you and I will see you next week. Thank you so much.